saying, I made sure to wear my green today because we're going to be reading all about this little character right there. What kind of animal is that? A frog, very good. And where is he sitting? On a log, you're a great reader. Did you know that's the title? Yes, it's called Frog on a Log. No, I'm not confused. Do you see that little mark at the end there? Touch your nose if you've seen that before. Very good, it is called a question mark. You got it, kiss your brain. A question mark is at the end of some words when you're asking a question. And if you notice when I read the title, Frog on a Log, my voice went up a little bit. Here's another example of a question. <clears throat> is it Friday? What's your favorite color? Those are both questions. They would end with a question mark. This is not a question. I like cereal. No, that's a sentence. It ends with a period. You got it. But since this ends in a question mark, let's read the title together and do a little raise in our voice at the end. Ready? Frog on a log. Good reading. Well, since we're reading a story about a frog on a log, I thought I could also sing a special song about five speckled frogs with you today. Have you heard that before? Touch your nose if you've heard the Five Speckled Frog song. That is awesome. Well, if you already know the song, you can just sing it with me. If you don't, go ahead to listen, then pause the video, rewind it, and you can watch it again and we'll sing it together the next time, okay? Awesome. Well, today you're going to need two things, your hands and your arm. Do you have those two things? Great, if you don't, I guess you could borrow one from a friend or maybe your brother or sister or mom or dad. Today, you're going to need your arm as a log. Let me see your log. Looks good. And then you're gonna need your five fingers for your five green and speckled frogs. And they're gonna sit on the log. And in the song, one of them hops into the pool. And when one hops in, we have to take one away. That's called subtraction. Can you say that with me? Subtraction, you got it. When you subtract, you take something away. So when we have five frogs and we take one away, now we have four, you got it. And if we have four and one hops into the pool, we have three, you got it. So every time we sing about the frogs, do that fast subtracting in your head to get ready to sing the next part. Okie dokie, okie dokie. Here we go, have your frog log ready and your five frogs. Here we go. Five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. Four green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were two green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. Two green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there was one green speckled frog. Ribbit, ribbit. One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. And that's the end of the song. 
I hope you like singing that with me. You did some great subtraction. Way to go. All right. Well, now that we sang all about the five green speckled frogs, we can read about our frog on a log. Let's sing our listening song together. Ready? Eyes are watching, ears are listening, lips are closed, hands are still, feet are really quiet, you should really try it. Listen well, listen well. Frog on a Log, written by Kess Gray and Jim Field. Go ahead, your turn, you read to me this time. Good reading, kiss your brain. Good job. Hey frog, sit on a log, said the cat. But I don't want to sit on a log, said the frog. Logs are all hard and uncomfortable and they can give you splinters. Ouch! <laughs> Cut splinters in his bottom. Oh no. I don't care, said the cat. You're a frog, so you must sit on a log. What do you notice about those words? Frog and log. They rhyme, you're right, very good. Let's see if there's more rhyming words in this story. Can't I sit on a mat? Asked the frog. Only cats sit on mats, said the cat. Well, what about a chair? Said the frog. I wouldn't mind sitting on a chair. Hairs sit on the chairs, said the cat. So we've got cats sit on mats and hairs sit on chairs. You got it. Great rhyming. Uh, perhaps I could sit on a stool, said the frog. Mules sit on stools, said the cat. Uh, what about the sofa, said the frog. I could stretch right out on a sofa. Gophers sit on sofas, said the cat. It's very simple, really. Where do you like to sit? Really? I have this comfy chair I like to sit in when I read. What's your favorite reading spot? That is awesome. Well, they're going to tell us about some silly spots to sit for these animals. Cats sit on mats. Hares sit on chairs, mules sit on stools, gophers sit on sofas, and frogs sit on logs. Uh, what do lions sit on? asked the frog. Lions sit on irons, said the cat. Do you think that lion looks very happy? No way, Jose. I sure hope that iron's not plugged in. If I look really closely, it looks like the cord is not in the wall, so whew, crisis averted. The lion is okie dokie. Ouch, said the frog. What do parrots sit on? Parrots sit on carrots, said the cat. Lions sit on irons and parrots sit on carrots. Well, that doesn't sound very comfortable, said the frog. It's not about being comfortable said the cat. It's about doing the right thing. Well, where do foxes sit on? asked the frog. Foxes sit on boxes, said the cat. Foxes sit on boxes and fleas sit on peas. Well, what do goats sit on? asked the frog. Goats sit on coats, said the cat. Goats sit on coats, cows sit on plows, and storks sit on forks. Oh my, would you want to be the stork on a fork? Me neither. What about the cow on a plow? Eh, what about the goats on coats? Eh, at least they'd be comfortable, I guess, huh? What do gorillas sit on? Asked the frog. Gorillas sit on pillars, said the cat. Gorillas sit on pillars, rats, sit on hats, weasels sit on easels, and moles sit on poles. What do seals sit on? asked the frog. Do you know anything? asked the cat. 
Seals sit on wheels, doves sit on gloves, newts sit on flutes, and lizards sit on lizards, and apes sit on grapes, said the cat. What about puffins? asked the frog. Puffins sit on muffins, said the cat. Puffins sit on muffins, snakes sit on cakes, owls sit on towels, gibbons sit on ribbons, lambs sit on jams, and bees sit on keys, said the cat. Well, I never knew that, said the frog. Well, you do now, said the cat. What do dogs sit on, asked the frog. I was hoping you weren't going to ask that, said the cat. Make a prediction. What do you think dogs sit on? It's a rhyming word with dog. Hmm. Oh, they could sit on logs. Maybe the frogs and logs, they share the logs with the dogs. Hmm. Do you think they sit on frogs? Oh my, let's find out. That's a good prediction. <gasps> Help! The end. What a silly story, huh? Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that story about the frog on a log and our song about the five green speckled frogs. I'm going to show you how you can have some froggy fun today to make a quick frog and to make some sight word lily pads. Yup. I'll even show you a special frog art video from a special art teacher. Yup, a real live art teacher. You got it. All right, well, I'll go get some supplies. Today, all you need is a piece of paper, some scissors, and something to draw. See you soon.